Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Submarines' ability to go underwater is what makes them such powerful weapons of war. Unfortunately, it also makes rescuing sailors from a damaged sub infinitely more complicated. Not only do rescuers have to deal with the fact that the crew members are trapped underwater, but they must avoid injuries related to a sudden increase or decrease in pressure. Over the years, engineers have presented a number of solutions to make submarine rescue operations easier and safer for all those involved. One of the most common approaches involves the use of submersibles. In 2008, NATO introduced its own submarine rescue system, the NSRS. The system consists of a manned submersible measuring 30 feet long and weighing around 30 tons. This advanced SRV, or submarine rescue vehicle, can reach depths of up to 1,200 feet and easily made its rescue hatch with that of a submarine, then pump the water out so the trapped sailors can be more easily retrieved. There's enough room inside the SRV for around a dozen people at a time. And thanks to the hard work of NATO members, an NSRS can be deployed anywhere in the world in under 72 hours. In Poland, the Navy has designed a specialized inflatable suit that can help submariners escape on their own. The crew members simply put on the suits, pressurize them, and exit through the missile tubes or a hatch in a flooded area. This is ideal for rescue operations that can't wait for a submersible to arrive. According to the designers, the crew members will be able to make their way to the surface with a minimized risk of embolism from the pressure change. Ideally, these suits would be used mainly in shallow water, as it would make decompression less of a problem. However, when the choice is between a risky surfacing and remaining trapped in a flooded sub, the former is a much smarter choice. Another innovative rescue solution is the submarine rescue chamber. Though the latest version of this deep diving chamber was introduced in the early 2000s, the idea of an emergency chamber like this actually dates back to before World War II. I read you. They are bell-type designs with space for up to eight people at a time. Can wipe some people as they sweat. Okay. Come in. We're ready to shut the hatch. Yep. Uh, they are supplied with air and maneuvered by a ship on the surface. Using high strength cable and a ship mounted crane, the SRC can be lowered to depths of more than 1,000 feet. Since they are fully pressurized, 
they can effectively mate with the hatch of a submarine. Say again. Again, they use a series of pumps to remove the water and create a dry, pressurized passage through which the trapped sailors can escape. While cramped, it's possible for these rescue chambers to make multiple trips in a row, rescuing submarine crew members while simultaneously bringing mechanics, first responders, and other emergency personnel. In some situations, divers may need to be sent down to the submarine in order to provide assistance to the crew. Of all the potential rescue options, this is the one that can often be deployed first. Not long after the tragic sinking of the Russian submarine Kursk in August 2000, NATO began assembling an international team of former submariner divers who could travel from incident to incident to help rescue their brothers in arms. These divers are well trained and extremely dedicated to their jobs. The divers can deliver a variety of equipment to the trap crew members, including escape suits, oxygen, and medical supplies. Ideally, rescue operations would involve all of these different techniques and vehicles working together in order to save the most people in the least amount of time. Training for submarine rescue is a rigorous process for any crewman. Jet hatch 542 to close. Thanks to NATO and other international partnerships, such positions now require standardized knowledge of submarines, diving, and the various equipment and procedures involved in both. These individuals are training inside a pressurized rescue module assigned to the U.S. Navy's Deep Submergence Unit. They're participating in an annual exercise called Chile Mar 3, which trains Americans and Chilean crews in submarine rescue operations. The main focus here is practicing the mating operations between the submersible and the submarine. This requires the use of deployable ladders and hoses to create a safe environment for egress. Once the individuals have been retrieved from the submarine, the submersible can make its ascent. And since both the submersible and the submarine were pressurized, the rescued crew members do not need to decompress before exiting. By far, the mating process is the most essential part of any submersible rescue. The submersible must form a strong seal over the hatch of the submarine. If this does not happen, pressure could escape and cause problems for crews in both vehicles.
Once a seal is established, the crew can open up the chamber, which will be filled with seawater until the pumps are put into operation. After the pumps remove the water, a ladder is deployed and a single rescuer can make contact with the crew. He or she will bang on the submarine hatch, letting those inside know that a seal has been established and it's safe to open the hatch. Um, I want to watch at least one person go ahead. Exercise Dynamic Monarch took place in the Polish port of Gdynia in 2014. The drill features numerous NATO ships, submarines, and aircraft all participating in a highly realistic submarines rescue exercise. The exercise lasted a total of 12 days and featured several rescue drills designed to facilitate the quick and safe evacuation of submarine personnel in distress. In this particular instance, the participating companies are utilizing the NSRS submersible and the orange surface escape suits. The exercise provided an excellent opportunity for rescue crews from a variety of different backgrounds and countries to practice working together to achieve a common goal. Both systems proved successful, but medical personnel and decompression chambers remained on standby to assist any injured or ill submariners. Though the operation was reserved for NATO members, the organization remains adamant that it would provide rescue services to any submarine that needed it, friend or foe. Not every submarine rescue situation is a matter of life and death. Like a car or any other vehicle, Submarines can suffer damage to their engines and tank systems that require exterior maintenance to fix. Unfortunately, submariners can't simply exit the vessel and check under the hood. This is where MARMC teams may be called in. MARMC stands for the Mid-Atlantic Regional Maintenance Center. It's made up of a team of experienced engineers and divers who can provide technical services to ships and subs in the U.S. fleet. These range from propeller inspections and efficiency procedures to emergency repairs. What MARMC does is often referred to as ship husbandry and covers everything related to general maintenance, cleaning, and upkeep of a military vessel. Military ships and their crews are called to participate in real-life rescue operations all the time. For instance, in 2014, nearly 300 persons from a series of sinking vessels were rescued off the coast of Malta by the USS Bataan and the USS Elrod. Later on, it was discovered that the people aboard the endangered vessels were actually African refugees trying to make their way to southern Italy.
However, the success of this operation serves as an important reminder that militaries around the world are not just warriors, but can be rescuers as well. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.